What's up, brother? What's up, big dog? You doing all right? Yeah, I'm blessed, man. Good to see you. Good to see you too, man. It's been a minute. Been a minute, huh? Yeah, it has, yeah. Um, <clears throat> man, tell the people who you are, dog. Who I am? Yep. Well, I was raised out in North Gasden, mm -hmm. across the Coosa from the Bluff and the Ten More Bend. Probably been more into the sin, more friends on the pen or the grave, flick of ash to the wind. Okay. What's well, your name, dog? Tell me who you are. On the YouTube, I'm John Wayne. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Jambo, my name. How'd you I'm get Jamin? Okay, so Jamin's your name. Is that yeah. and Jambo is just a nickname you got like growing up? It just kind of happened like that. Yo, my boy got a bow at that name at the end of the name. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Hey, but it's kind of how we recognize each other. That's cool though. Yeah. What was it like growing up in Gadsden? A lot of busting heads, mm -hmm. a lot of fighting, a lot of football, a lot of, a lot of competing yeah. against different, different uh, schools and shit, man. I bet you was hard nosed, huh? I wanted to kill anybody that wasn't on my side. Yep. I was out to murder them any way I could on the yeah, golf yeah. Field, in football. No, for sure. You know what I'm saying, man? Yeah. So, and that's how you used to be taught to play. Like, that's the yeah. enemy attack. But now it's like, you need to pull their little pink flag and let them slide. Yeah. You know, man? It's like the program movie, Kill Them All, Let the Paramedics. Oh, I love that shit. Yeah, yeah fire that, movie, that dude. That shit was fire, bro. But not only did you play football, though, you was, a, you was a baseball player too, right? You played baseball? Oh, yeah. Did you like one more than the other? Baseball, man, was uh, probably more my passion because I was, uh, I just loved hitting the ball, man. And I played catcher, man, and I could see the whole game. Oh, that's fire. You was catcher? Cool. Yeah. yeah. Musically, when you was growing up, what was it that you was hearing growing up like that you was drawn to initially? Maybe not from like creativity standpoint, but just for like, just listening to music. Just from the blues to some old country, some wailing, mm -hmm. you know, some Willie, some Johnny Cash, just some old stuff my mama all played. It's just such a variety that, that looking back, you know, but just some old howling music. Mm -hmm. I'm howling the blues, you know. I mean, shit, if you know the blues, you know who I'm talking about. No, for sure. What you, in, in that new song that you did, Smooth, you did a lot of jazz references. Yeah. Like, I don't know if people caught them, but you was you was throwing out so many dope references in that in that Smooth song. Yeah, man. And I just want I feel like the blue, like it all stems from the blues. Mm -hmm. The blues is the the mother root of where all other music stems. Yeah. You know, man, and branches yeah. out. And cause that's when the, really the storytelling of what a human being actually going through. It ain't sugar coated. You know, I'm telling you the raw, let me tell you what, this mm -hmm. raw, I'm hitting this shit raw. When did you start falling in love with rap music? How, how old were you then? About that, was it about teenager or was it later? Man, when that girl Ice T and Ice Q mm -hmm. and, and NWA, then Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Doggy mm -hmm. Dogg came out. Yep. I mean, all of it, man, yep. it spoke to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Like, I was about all of it. It like just opened up a different realm of who you could be in, yeah. in the world, you know? Yeah, I fell in love with it then, man. Just the beat and the storytelling, you know, man? But I never, Pictures myself, go ahead and telling these stories like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just knowing you, I know that two of your biggest rap influence, like as far as what you like, some of your favorite artists is Tupac and DMX. And I know that you get compared to some of those, like similarity style-wise. Would that be two of your favorites, you think? Who don't love yeah. Tupac and DMX? I mean, yeah, man. just they, they delivering the rawness in they shit, man. I can't help but move, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It gets me going, dude, and uh, so for sure. But there's so many artists, you know, you'll listen to somebody and you'll be like, man, I forgot about that song, you know. Yeah. With my music, man, I want to be able to reach into a different realm with the music and come around and slap people upside the back of the head and be like, oh, shit. You know no, what I mean? That shit right. Yeah. You know what I mean, bro? You're so, doing that now. When did writing become a thing for you? Maybe not from a music standpoint, but just... When did you get a passion for just writing, whether it be poetry or just whatever? You know, I grew like listening to a lot of, a lot of, well, I say metal, you know, some white zombie, raw mm -hmm. zombie, 
Yeah. Uh, Tool, mm -hmm. Pantera, Nirvana, the, mm -hmm. you know, the grunge era and all that, man. But when they used to get the CD books and there would be the, the lyrics written in them, and I began to keep a journal and mm -hmm. write little crazy shit that I was thinking, you know, man? Yeah. And uh, it just kind of grew from that. Like, I'd get through one journal and I'd start another one. And so it's kind of started like a little book collection for me. You talked to me before about when you were writing, it wasn't even from, it wasn't from a musical aspect. You were writing because you wanted to write books of poetry, correct? Just or book, because books I in general? enjoyed yeah. the art of writing yeah, yeah. and telling the stories. You know, it wasn't yeah. like I was trying to do it with the music or the poetry, but, mm -hmm. you know, um, be able to tell a, a story inside a story. I guess we'll fast forward to current, like, within the last four or five months, right? So a few years back, y'all shot a couple of videos, the ones that are on your channel now, right? Thank You Mean and, and uh, was it Flush It? Yeah, Flush. Flush, yeah. Like, those were from a few years ago, though, right? That's correct. Yeah, and then y'all just, you just never released them or anything like that? No. And then did you, you and Cotton linked back up to do Drip? You want to speak about how that came about with Drip? Yeah, it was actually uh, me and Banks. And them, them two videos, they were about five or six years old. You know, Banks is busy. I'm busy on the road doing, you know, RCP work and this and that. And uh, we just never got up. And I was like, you know, whatever, man, that didn't work out for me. I ain't gonna do music. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, shit, I got a good job. I'm gonna focus on this shit. Then this past December, man, it just so happens we linked up, got yeah. the videos back. It's like, man, let's, uh, I'll shoot you a beat. You wanna do another, you wanna record? Yeah. I said, yeah, man, shot me a beat and we recorded drill. Then shot the video, that thing, took off, his hit me up talking about, man, did you buy uh, some views on YouTube? And I was like, buy some views? Yeah. I was like, bro, you know I didn't even know how to, I didn't even have a YouTube block. Yeah. You helped me set that shit up. You think I know how to fuck to buy, <laughs> buy a view? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah. for real. But it started taking off, man, and people was rocking it, mm -hmm. and, which really surprised me. And then seeing the comments and stuff, just seeing Lucas, you know, fall in love with the project and then Cotton Man mm -hmm. fall in love with the project and mm -hmm. it coming together and everything that, you know, we've done, you coming down to Indian yeah, bro. and uh, yeah. just how everything has kind of come together. It's Organically, kind of like bro. A, yeah. It's yeah. like a fairy, like I don't think it happens often like it right. is. It, it, I've been doing and it 20 people. years and it has, I've never seen it happen like the way that it ha is happening with this. Because yeah. like the first time we, me and Chance came down here, it was when you were shooting the video for No Problems. Yeah. And I had seen the TikTok of Drip, and I knew nothing about you. I found the YouTube video, and then I saw the contact was your Instagram. Mm. I sent you a follow request on Instagram, message back and forth, said, I'd love to interview you to get to know you better, let the people know you better. And then we came down here, but we didn't know. That's all we knew, you know what I'm saying? And since then, bro, I mean, you're talking three, four months, I mean, Look where it's been in three or four months, you know? And it's just great to see because y'all have been consistent every single week dropping content. I know this is an interview, but I'm, I'm glad people are gonna get to see this too because there's a lot of people that have probably just seen your music videos on this channel. Now they get to see Jambo, they get to see Jamin, they get to hear your story, you know? Get to kind of get a, a better feel of who you are. How does it feel to be an alien? Are you an alien or an AI or anything? Yeah, I'm a new breed, rare breed. Yeah. Never seen nothing like me, but I hang on to your seat. Mm-hmm. All right. Tell him. Say he re that was really him, guys. That was really him rapping that. What do you think yeah. about that? What I need to do, the fucking robot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, yeah. But, no, nah, it's, I mean. I get it, though. It's hard. It, it, I think you you know. can, I think AI is a real threat to humanity. No, 100%, dude. You know? 100%. And they can do things with AI that is really we can't imagine. If we seen what all they could do, I think it would scare the fuck out of everybody. Oh, dude, it's scary yeah. now. Tell them what you do for a living. I uh, I grew up a brick mason laying brick block and rock and uh, uh, RCP work, doing uh, working on under vessel work at nuclear power plants and just going doing refuel and 
maintenance and nuclear power plants, whatever it be, whether it be on the pumps and motors or uh, changing out the control rod drives on the Dang, reactor, dude. you know, but yeah. different things. I mean, there's just a lot of different jobs. So I did that up until we shot drip, and then mm -hmm. I took, I was supposed to be back at work on uh, January 31st. I took a couple months off, yep. took a little gamble to, to pursue the music. Uh, for a little bit and, and just keep mashing on the gas and see where this was going to take us. Yep. I still do that that line of work. It's there for me. They understand what's going on. Really, a lot of good, good people that I've met. I was going to say, yeah, because that's where you spend the majority of your... You said you was working, what, seven twelves? On the nuclear side, it's, you know, probably six twelves. Yeah, man, started. that's... That's six, seven, twelve, you know. What's the difference between that kind of work and now what you're doing? Does what you're doing now feel like work? Because I know you're not used to like the social media stuff, the camera stuff, like the processes of the music side of things. How does that compare to you? It's more mental. Any writer knows that writing's a lonely trait because you might can get in the studio and, and y'all come up with some shit, you know, man? Yeah. But you're going to really come up with your best stories when you're alone and you're inside of your your being, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I think writing as much music as I have been, it's cool, man. I don't mind doing that, but I still like some flavor in my life. I'm ready to go do some shows. Oh, man, you're fixing to. See what yeah. all that's about. You know what I mean? I can't right wait for you to see that. It's bro. almost like, but I've been writing since I was young. Yeah. I can still do this, I can record, yeah. but until you get out there and actually experience some of this shit and like yeah. actually see people vibe into your shit, yeah, dude. you know, I think that's going to open up a whole different. Uh, oh, dude, you're going to love it, bro. You're fixing to be performing at Justin Time's Redneck Rave in May. I cannot wait for y'all to see what kind of a vibe that's gonna be. That is gonna be right up Jambo's lane, dude. I'm telling you, I'm hype about it. I'm hype too, man, yeah. cause I feel like that's somewhere you can really just, I don't matter, come alive, man. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And you ain't good company. Mm -hmm. and, you know, man, your brother's looking out for you, and let's just have a good time, man. And, oh, dude, for sure. Oh, damn. Yeah. Oh, in August, man, South Fork Music Fest, man, that's, you're gonna be performing on that Friday. It's it's uh, yeah. It's like Adam, uh, Bubba, me, you, my boy Country, um, Deagle Kid. I think there's a, that's that day. But the Friday is Demon and Dusty, or the Thursday's Demon and Dusty. Saturday's Up Church, Broadnax, Leroy Biggs. T like it's it's a three day fucking. It's gonna be really dope, dog. It's gonna be cool, man. Yeah. And you're gonna you're gonna get to meet a lot of cool fans and supporters of you that you're gonna get to see. Because all you're seeing now is numbers on the internet, which you're not used to. You don't really have anything to compare it to. But once people can see you and shake your hand and take a picture with you and buy some merchandise from you and say, hey, man, I listened to your song and it did, it made me feel like, like that's going to make it. Because for you, it's such a passion thing for you with the music, right? It's not, it's not money first. It's always the passion first, the art first. And when you see how it's affecting the certain people, that's going to give you that much more motivation, dog. What you've done so far has far exceeded any level that you thought it would ever be, right? Is that safe to say as far as, like, your music personally? It was just a shot in the dark, man. Like, you, it's like hit or miss, you know what I mean? Like, either way, I yeah. took a shot, you know? Yeah, yeah. Luckily, like, it hit, and it's, it's still hitting, and it's amazing to me every day. And... um it's just exciting to see that I'm, am I really going to get to experience this type of shit Yeah. at this age in my life? Like, yeah. I think that if you keep doing what you're doing, bro, you're going to keep affecting people. You're gonna, people are going to keep supporting what you're doing because it's genuine. And anybody that watches this interview can tell that it's genuine by you because it's everything that, about you is genuine from the moment that me and you started chopping it up in January. I was like, this is a real dude. Like, you can just tell, you know? And it's not nothing that's an act. It's not, it's just you, bro. What, what's one thing you want to leave with your supporters with this, like, ending this interview off? What's something you want to tell the supporters of Jamway? That, um, just thank you from the bottom of my heart. I never, 
thought I would read something, um, a comment or whatever, and well, I began to cry in a restaurant on something somebody said. I posted about a song that I wrote. You know, man, and it's amazing to me that um, it's touching people in a place how it touched me to write it. And uh, mm -hmm. just to see that is some, uh, it's a blessing. And I appreciate every single one of my fans and the people that have taken the time to comment and listen. And, uh, you know, like I ain't, I ain't trying to be no best rapper ever. I'm just telling my stories, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just hope that it can reach out and grab the world's heart and give it a big old hug. For sure, though.